Hi, my name is Jeffrey Lynn. I've taught in Franklin Township for 30 years. Um, and I'm presenting on academic hand signs. I have pre previously presented at NGT Saw a number of times. And it's a method for teaching what is sometimes called tier two vocabulary, academic language, um, using a multisensory approach. So basically the approach that we have used and um, actually uh, I basically developed, but I had a, maybe a little input here and there, um, is you have to determine a core meaning for your word first. You have to look up the main meaning and then really think about what is the most uh, general um, definition you can get that is most useful. It won't solve all the problems in terms of comprehension, but it will solve most of them if you do this. Um, then we develop a hand sign that goes with the word to depict the meaning and a meaning script of what you would say while you're doing the hand sign. And also we also have to remember that we always explain why did we develop this hand sign for this particular word. The use of a hand sign and a single core meaning enable immediate comprehension. And this was dramatic with students um, that I worked with. Uh, the whole birth of this program um, or this methodology was when I dealt with students maybe 10 years ago and we started to focus on academic language heavily. Uh, I found that I could teach and teach and teach. And at the end of the week, when I assessed students used zero of the vocabulary I had focused on all week. And this was one of the methods that really helped students get it and then be able to remember it. Um, Multisensor approach really enables long-term memory. Um, and it's, it accesses, I guess, more parts of the brain. It, it webs memory and it's a time proven approach. Um, students really see the usefulness of words very early on, especially if you give them opportunities to actually use the words that they're learning. It um, is amazing that um, they, um, it becomes much more relevant to them and it doesn't go, it doesn't get lost in all the other things that are gonna be thrown at them. Here's a little bit of data. Here's data from 2016. 17 uh, at Hillcrest School in Franklin Township. This is third and fourth grade classes. And these are homerooms. And you can see that's the beginning of the month. That's the end of the month, uh, pre and post scores. And the improvement, it's basically four of these academic terms that they worked on at the beginning of the month. They were told to define the words. And at the end of the month, they were told to define the words. And this is the change that we saw. Here's uh, the second year we, we did this. The, actually, unfortunately, at the end of this year, the team was just tired of uh, doing this as an extra kind of activity. And so we stopped um, the school-wide program. We actually did um, present it to the entire uh, elementary school, uh, but the third and fourth grade were the only grades that we collected data for. And so here's an example of a mini script for the word cause and also a, a definition that causes what made something happen. And so you would, you would do the hand sign, you would go, you'd have your cause come along and boom, move your effect there. And then you point back to your cause and you say, what made that happen? Cause means what made something happen? And uh, here's a video of actually just a still from one of the videos. Actually, in the things that we use as students, we actually filmed with students presenting. Um, and then also we had everything written out, the mini script, the definition, and uh, it was also printed out on a nice, um, um, in a nice font. This is our pivotal phrase. A pivotal phrase gets a big idea all crushed into one beautiful sentence. We are going to hand sign this phrase. The, the way, the reason we use hand signs is it helps us to put things in our brain long term. I've done this with my classes. We did this sentence with my classes, and they can all do this. So we're going to try this today. Okay. So the big the pivotal phrase, or pivotal means really important. 
things pivot on them. So here's our pivotal phrase. The framers of the Constitution envisioned a government with a separation of powers. The framers of the Constitution envisioned a government with a separation of powers. So what we're going to do is we're going to hand sign that first because I don't want you to go out for chips, go to the kitchen or something. I want you to get excited, get your body moving. And as I said, the reason that we do this hand sign procedure is because our brains, you have two brains, by the way, you have two brains, um, a left and a right brain inside. And you also have a beautiful highway between the brains called the corpus callosum. It lets the brains talk to each other, which is good. Um, and you learn things through feeling. You learn things for your whole life. All of your memories are based upon when you touch things, when you smell things, you can remember the smell, the bread that your dad cooked. You can remember the uh, taste of the lasagna that your sister made. You can remember these things um, through um, through taste, through feeling, through the movements of your body. And when we come to school, what we do is we just cut up that learning into um, just what we would do in school. What do we do in school? We do a lot of moving a pencil, a lot of reading, a lot of writing, but we don't do much experiencing. And so that's two positives for this that we're doing today. Is one is this is a real life thing. The other thing is that um, we're going to be moving to help you remember things. So let's move on. And I don't. So what, what I've done is I've made a little video, and um, I don't want you to try to move with the hand signs. Each of uh, the words um, ha has been hand signed with a meaning. Uh, so what I'm going to do is slide this over, and I'm going to demo some of these. The first one is the. Um, I think we got it. Okay. The. This is a, uh, meaning one thing that I've never seen before. This is. I should have closed that. I should close that. Okay. Put that on my belly. But that looks better than my clothes on. Okay. The. Now, these gentlemen who wrote the Constitution had the opportunity to frame a government. They could have chose anything. They could have chose any way to have a government. They could have had five presidents. They could have had no Congress. They could have had two Supreme Courts. They could have had no Supreme Court. They, in the whole possibilities, the possibilities of a government, they made a picture frame. This is the way they this is what they do. They're the framers. And very often they are spoke of, spoken of as um, in very um, respectful terms. These are the person that chose, these are the people that chose the government that we have now. Of means from a thing. Okay, this is my chocolate thing piece. Up, up chocolate. Up. Go back to the. Now, constitution. Constitution is the big law of the country. So, constitution. Constitution. Big law. Now, this is rule. You learn rule in school. You break a rule, you don't go to jail. This is a law. You break the law, you go to jail. Okay, so constitution and vision means to see something, to put vision into something. Envision. So you see something, oh, that's how it's going to be. I, I envision it. I envision it. Okay, go back to uh, any one thing. Government, the power of the strong. Um, with peanut butter, jelly, with a. Of <laughs> pow, make a muscle sign, make a muscle sign. Okay, so that's how the hand signs go. So we'll run the video, and I'm gonna try and keep up with the video, and then maybe we'll do this a couple times, and then we'll go back to the original, and then we'll talk about what the sentence means again, and then we'll plunge on to the big ideas, the big ideas, because there's lots of big ideas, unbelievable, important ideas in this sentence. So let's give it a shot. So if I Get quiet or whatever, you still got the video. Okay? Hmm. 
who's more important? Who's more important? The video of me or you? I don't know. Probably you. Keep it moving. The framers of the Constitution envisioned a government with a separation. Now, oh, what I should have told you was you should stand up, okay? I'm sitting down because I have my set up here, but you should stand up. Or, okay, the other thing is make sure you don't bump into anybody. You probably already did bump into somebody. If you're with a brother or sister in the room, you're social distancing, right? So you should be separate from each other. Um, but try to do the hand signs, and we'll do it again. Okay, here we go. The framers. Vision a government with a separation of powers. Oh, God, yeah, you love it, buddy. You love it. Come here. Uh, oh, gosh. Oh, good. We're still rolling. Sorry. One more time. I haven't had coffee this morning. The framers. The framers. Envision a government with a separation of powers. So, yeah, for government, I tried to use this hand sign. Basically, the people who are in charge, people who have power. It's a little bit confusing, the, but uh, that's the one I'm using for government. Um, and so maybe we could go back and see if we can do it. Okay? Are you ready? Here we go. The framers of the Constitution envision a government with a separation of powers. Again, ready? The framers of the Constitution envision government with a separation of powers. Wow. Yeah, so now we can talk about what is the hand sign. You can sit down, breathe a little bit, and then we can talk about what the sentence means. I asked my students what is the sentence about, and uh, I was taught how to do this by a uh, instructor named Marion Cookie Eller, who uh, was a student of Lady Wanda Fillmore for your education. Um, Basically, she would ask the question, when you have a big sentence like this, what is it about? And what the sentence is about is a thing. When I ask my students this, the sentence about is, a, is about a thing. Let's see if we get some more light. The sentence is about a thing near the beginning of the sentence. Okay? Yeah, that's good. Um, so what's the thing that's near the beginning of the sentence? If you're into, I mean, now I would say noun, but the problem is the, the subject of the sentence might not be a noun. It might be a whole bunch of words that all come together, and that's what the sentence is about. So what is the sentence about? The thing that's near the beginning of the sentence. Well, let's talk about the. Is the a thing? Mm, no. Framers. Is that a thing? Well, it's people. And they're things, yeah. So the sentence is about the framers, but that's not enough because there could be any framers. There could be picture framers. There could be framers of arguments all over the place. But we have to add some more information. This sentence is about more than that. So what's more than that? That's what the sentence is about. Well, let me add some words. And also, when we come to something you can do, you know you're done with finding what the sentence is about. So we get there, that'll help. Okay, so let's see. The framers, let's keep going, of the Constitution. Let's try that. The framers of the Constitution. Do you think that that's what the sentence is about? Yeah, I agree. It's, that's what the sentence is about. Also, the, the way that we can know is we got to something you can do. What you can you do? You can envision. You can envision. When you can do it. You're done. So this sentence is about the frame, framers of the Constitution. 
those guys. I showed you a picture of those guys. This picture is about those guys who wrote the Constitution, and they framed it. They framed it. They Not only did they write it, but they created its very structure. And then what did they do? What did we learn about the framers of the Constitution in this sentence? They envisioned something. They envisioned something. They dreamed of something. They hoped for something that would be good. They envisioned it. They envisioned an original plan. They envisioned a government. They saw a government. the idea of what that government would be. They saw a government that would have a separation, a separation of powers. Not one guy would have all the powers. You know the, operate, the, the opposite of a separation of powers is a concentration of powers. They didn't want a concentration of powers. They were under a king. The king had a full concentration of powers. He could just say, go, do it, make it so. They could say, you can't say anything, and people had to do it just about anything. I mean, he had certain rules he had to operate under, but there was no group of people that told the king, hey, you can't do that. You don't have all the power. And so they wanted a country with a separation of powers. And so that's what they wrote into our Constitution, a separation of powers. And that's what we're talking about. And that's what I want you to think about today. And that's what I want you to remember for the rest of your life.